We got two brand new maps with Brian Water Springs and Flounder Heights being heavily reworked from Splatoon 1. And I want to talk about them because I think they have some design changes that make them better than the previous maps and a few things worth talking about in terms of the direction we need for new maps. So with that all being said, be sure to subscribe if you enjoy and let's get started. So to start things out, I want to talk about Museum. And specifically, I want to talk about this route on Museum because with the original 12 maps to the game, this is the only route out of all of them that completely circumnavigates mid, and it also does so while having good cover and a place to stand that's valuable to the team. These kind of routes are something a lot of the maps desperately need, as it makes it much easier to escape choke points and spawn camping, and creates more dynamic gameplay and strategy. Now, we have more of these. With Brinewater Springs, you have a very similar, very fast jump from this location that drops you all the way down here. This is something I didn't think we would see in any other map, because Museum was a Splatoon 1 map, and it was there in Splatoon 1, so that's probably why it was there here. But now they're putting it into a wholly new stage. I don't think this route is perfect. The actual drop is so long that unless if you're a dually, it takes a really long time and is predictable. And unlike Museum, there is significantly less cover down here, and it's in much less relevant a position, outside of Clam Blitz, which I'll get to later. But it does at least still have two exits here, and I like that it exists in the first place. Without it, this map would be really bad. And the fact that they're willing to put this here at all makes me think some amount of their map design philosophy might have changed. So, on Clam Blitz, what they've changed is this area is now extended a bit, and there is a rail here. This allows you to completely circumnavigate mid. Not even a little bit. You can get all the way back here into the enemy's plan. The rail is still a bit more slow and predictable than I would have liked, but it is still a way to get completely around the map. And this makes this map on Clam Blitz actually really good. This option is absolutely something I think the game needs more of, and the idea that they're adding it makes me think they might be more open to longer flank routes in the future. Another thing about this map that I noticed is this right flank is absolutely awful for defenders. You can't really hit anything because of this wall, and if you drop down here, for whatever reason, this is uninkable. I get that the attacking team can't get up here, which isn't a problem of itself, but like, one suction clears this whole spot and then you have to drop down here, or jump all the way back to spawn. Like, this right route absolutely needs to be made better. It is one of the main problems with this map, because it means once the tower or anything gets up here, it's just, it's horrible, because you can't actually use this. This drop becomes way too long a flank if the objective's already this close, and so you're just kind of stuck here. It's really weird. To me, this basically makes the stage unbelievably bad in tower control in Rainmaker, but on maps like Clam Blitz and Zones, where the enemy team doesn't really push as far up, I think it's a lot more playable, and that's where the stage can shine. But I think Rework should absolutely expand this area, make this wall significantly less limiting, and maybe add a bit more spawn cover on the left side. Outside of that, I think the main thing to talk about for this stage is, uh, the size. This is one of the smallest maps in the entire game. You can get to Zone and cap it in about 8 seconds, which is absolutely ridiculous. I do think that the terrain of the stage makes it a little bit better than it would be if it was more flat, like Maki Maki, for example. However, I do think the stage is a bit too small as a whole to where it can be problematic. Another thing I'm disappointed with is the pass for Tower Control and Rainmaker. With how small the map is, keeping the fight nearest to mid or even this spot here is best for the stage, but the tower quickly moves toward the enemy base. Having a detour around this area I think would have been a lot better, since if the tower went here it would incentivize this spot for the defenders to be a little bit better, and mean that the tower does not end up going so far into the enemy base. I really don't see the need why this went so far away so quickly. Already past the 40 point marker, you're at the part of the stage that feels worse to play on, and Rainmaker is even worse than this. Now, Rainmaker was always going to be the worst mode on this map because there's basically only one push option the entire way through, but it also has the hammerhead problem of why is the checkpoint this close? Like with Hammerhead, having it just a little bit farther, in this case over here or even here, would have done absolute wonders because the checkpoint would have actually been before the main part of the match where things get really dicey. I don't really get the point of these checkpoints being so far back 
and combined with the lack of alternate routes for Rainmaker, makes this an absolutely awful stage on this mode. It's also worth noting that this wall isn't even inkable for some reason, so your already limited Rainmaker path is only limited even further here. Pretty ridiculous. Outside of Clan Blitz where the rail is added here, I think as a whole it's a bit of a disappointing stage. It's too small, the terrain is very limiting, and the objective paths aren't great. It does, however, surprise me that this route even exists in the first place, and it makes me think that the devs might be more lenient to design stages a little bit better and give players more options. This still needs work, of course, but at least it's a start, and that's something I can't say for any other stage. Flounder Heights is still really good. Let's talk about the expanded spawn area first. In Splatoon 1, this used to be much smaller and less far back, and it's been extended a lot. Mainly, this adds this new defensive high ground, which is really good for taking back your own snipe and makes it super easy to get over there. Speaking of which, they've also added a rail onto snipe, which is a really good approach route, able to put you all the way on the left route. Even if it's predictable, it's very fast and hard to ignore, so something people have to be aware of. Outside of that is really just a few uninkables added underneath, which I think is to make things more visible since this is also glass, and uh, the water's here, so you can reset the Rainmaker, which is nice for that mode, but really weird everywhere else. This is a small thing, but I also wish there would be a defending sponge right here for Flounder. Being able to back up if you're getting flanked on a snipe would be really valuable, and because it's so close to where the flank is, you'd still have to see it ahead of time to get out, which I think would be fair. This left side has a change I'm not sure about so far. In Splatoon 1, this used to be a back and forth route where you could walk in both ways. But in this game, it's uninkable, so while you can drop here from one side, you can't go back on the other. I'm not sure how I feel about this quite yet, because I kind of like the dynamic of this being a one-way wall, and it's still really easy for defenders to hold since they're climbing up to you. So I'm okay with this for now, but it's definitely a bit weird to get used to. The more important route gone in Splatoon 1 is the tunnel. Now, it kind of makes sense that it's gone here because this plat doesn't extend as far. This would go around this far in Splatoon 1. But I still think having a drop around this part would have been really useful for getting around your spawn, especially with how important this right flank is. Which brings me to the worst change this map got. This right side now features pipes that prevent you from climbing up them, an uninkable wall, and another uninkable wall. You can still climb up on the side here, so using the right roof isn't impossible, but it puts you in a very awkward position because you're much closer to mid, whereas before you could climb up and basically approach this entire area. Especially, I think this part was a missed opportunity because it would be great for squid surging onto the grate or squid roll wall jumping onto it. And without that, this makes this spot feel really limited. I guess it's kind of meant for chargers, and it's useful to be able to see people on the wall. So I like that the grate is there, but this all being uninkable just doesn't feel great. Besides that though, there's mostly positive changes as a whole, as pretty much all of the climbable walls on the map are still there. And in fact, because this side no longer has a wall, it's much easier to climb from the right and go around here, which also has more cover in the form of the balloons. And on top of that, while the smaller size of the map can be a bit awkward to get used to, I think it means climbing up and traversing the stage got a lot easier. So even with the reduced routes, all the routes that exist are now much faster and more simple to move on. Flounder Heights is a very interesting map design in the sense that the middle of the map is high ground, where normally it would be the low ground. I think that this is really important to have a lot of approach routes on, because otherwise it's very easy for defenders to hold. Playing on this map is going to feel really disorientating and different, for those who are used to Splatoon 3 and 2's map design, because it's going to center around using a unique variety of approach options to pressure and maintain control as you push up into mid slowly and take control of it, coming from so many different routes that the enemies can't easily defend, which is a lot harder than it seems. But once you get used to it, it means that you have a lot of area to approach from, and it makes the stage feel amazing. Tower control had a completely changed path. In Splatoon 1, it would go under the map, which definitely worked, but it was a lot more awkward to actually stop a tower push, because of the position it was in, allowing the defenders to position on the high ground. Now, it purely goes to the side here, like this, on multiple checkpoints and down the ramp which while it may seem easier for the defenders to maintain control of, since nobody has to be in the trench, it's actually a lot harder, because as the tower moves over here, this side of the map becomes a better and better flank, meaning approaches coming from this way are much better to take the tower back. And as a whole, I think it's a very positive change that this path has a new route. Rainmaker has two checkpoints, which I really like. This one is easier to get to, but is also easy to stop if the defenders are in position. And this one puts the Rainmaker in a better spot to continue the push, but takes a bit longer to get to. I think that's a really cool dynamic, and I like it. The main problems Flounder had with Rainmaker was that it ended up being a really fast push in Splatoon 1, and it was difficult to move the Rainmaker out. Two things here have been changed. 
First of all, since the spawn area has been extended, the Rainmaker path has also been extended. It comes with this route being removed as you could normally climb up this in Splatoon 1, but I think that's a fine sacrifice, and I think the length it takes to get to the goal is much more fair. Clam Blitz is the final mode worth talking about. This wall is here that's been in a few modes, but it doesn't change too much since it's inkable on this side. But I do like the position of the Clam Basket. You need to be able to drop off the roof to score, which is the important thing that needed to happen. Otherwise, this was going to be a bit of a problem. I think this map is naturally suited to be great for Clam Blitz, since the Clam spawns are in reasonable locations, but when you push, you have to really commit, making it easier for the defending team to stop a push and keeping it from being too snowball-y, which is the main problem of the mode. As a whole, while the new flounder absolutely has some downsides, I think the removed roots are really unfortunate, mainly climbing up the right side of the roof. Everything else has been a positive change, and it's much better on modes like Tower and Rainmaker, as well as Clown Blitz being naturally amazing for the stage. I think this is easily the best map in the entire game, and it's great on all four modes, which is absolutely amazing for map lists, rotations, and just in general play. So, as a whole, are the new stages good? Well, Flounder, the stage that was good in Splatoon 1 was, but on the bright side, at least Brian Water has some new additions that make me think the devs are going in a more positive direction. It's not a perfect change, but it's a nice addition and a good start that can hopefully lead to the right direction when we get map reworks. But that's all I'm going to have to say until I get to my big map coverage video talking about all its problems, reworks, etc. So look forward to that in the future, and I'll see you guys next time.